Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. Come on, how good was that yesterday? 3-0 against Manchester United. First time we've beaten them at the lane for 14, 15 odd years. It's been a terrible time against them at home, but yesterday we put it right. As I said on Facebook, that one was for Pedro Mendes and all those other years. I hope some of you guys were there as I was. The place was absolutely rocking. Anyway, this is our usual Monday regular five things that I felt we learned. And of course, today it's about the five things we learned from the Manchester United game. First up, I want to talk about Eric Lamella. Yesterday was a fascinating day for Eric Lamella. Let's not forget, I say this quite a lot. I've not always been Lamella's biggest fan. However, what I will say is, of course, he always works so hard. So, so hard. And yesterday was no different. To be honest, in the first 45 minutes, he didn't have a great game. And I'm not just saying that because he missed that header from three, four yards out. I actually think those, those chances often look a lot easier than they are. The ball's coming across. Yes, it's on a plate, but David De Gea spreading himself. Lamella doesn't know whether he's going to get hit or not. And he just didn't get enough on the header. But apart from that, he was giving the ball away a lot. His decision making wasn't great. And if you're in the ground, you'll know the crowd were getting on his back a little bit. They were groaning each time he mislaid a pass and getting behind him. But this is why I want to talk about Eric Lamella, because he is a player who has gone through so much at this club. He's been given stick. He's been told time and time again that he's not worth the money that it was paid for him. And he just took so long to get into his game and to really make the fans believe in him. However, yesterday is a perfect example of just how far he's come. Because despite having a bad first 45, bad maybe even first 60 minutes, did he stop trying? Did he stop working? Did he stop flying into tackles, winning the ball back? He was responsible for that first goal because him and Harry Kane got in that little scrap, I think with Smalling and someone. And he was on the ground and he was just hacking away at the ball, trying to win that ball. He got it. Kane got it out to Ericsson and then Ericsson did his business from there, getting it over to Deli Alley. If Eric Lamella wasn't the kind of player who had a thick skin, who had a backbone, then he would have missed that chance in the first half and then just shied away. He wouldn't have got himself in positions. He wouldn't have got involved in tackles. He doesn't do that. He works and works and works. He puts it together and basically what he does is he spends a, quite a long time often getting himself into the game. It's almost like he has to get into tackles. He has to get himself booked. He has to miss a chance. He has to get someone on his back or something like that and then his talent shines through. And what he did yesterday was all of that. He took his time. It took a while. But in the end, his genius shone through. And the third goal, I can't tell you how difficult that skill is. I know it looks easy just because the ball's coming across the box and he's, what, 10, 11, 12? No, what was he? Probably more like 16, 17 yards out. And you think, oh, it's quite easy to get shot off there. No, Danny Rose pinged that ball back, cut it back at a rate of knots, and to stay over the ball and get it to stay along the ground so the keeper's got no chance whatsoever, so difficult to do. It's so easy in that position to just come in, lean back, and sky it. He didn't do it. Fantastic finish. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you haven't seen it from both angles, Watch that as well, because from the behind the goal out, uh, angle, it shows just how cleanly he struck that ball. A fantastic finish, fully deserved after his all-action performance. And I, for one, am totally glad that we're not now talking just about the fact that Eric Lamella missed a sitter and he had a bad first half. Fantastic performance from him. Wanted to talk about him because, you know, I give people props when they deserve their props. And I've certainly given Lamella some stick in my time. So that was the first thing that I felt we learned. Eric Lamella, well played. Second up. Danny Rose. I mentioned him just there. He set up that goal. Unbelievable cross. I feel in the last two or three months, Danny Rose and Carl Walker, to be honest, but especially Danny Rose's crossing has improved immeasurably. Yesterday was a perfect example with that third goal. Uh, earlier in the season, I'd say he probably would have tried to get his foot around it and get it in between the keeper and the defenders. And a lot of times when he tries that, he ends up skying it off the pitch. What he's been doing in the last two months or so, and they must have been working at this uh, on the training ground, is cutting it back. And yesterday when he got in that position, he got his foot on the instep underneath it and it whizzed along the ground, along the kind of wet turf from where they've been watering it and just arrived so perfectly for, for Lamella. That works really well for us when it happens because obviously the defenders, because we're coming at pace, Danny Rose is running at pace down the wing. Defenders are trying to get themselves back in a position and when he cuts it behind them, they can't get their body out. Uh, to turn their body shape in time to get to the ball. And we have men coming onto it from midfield, just like Lamella did. So that was fantastic. But that, that wasn't what it was all about with Danny Rose. Just another all-action performance. So strong now. So much better defensively than he previously was. And works so hard, up and down and up and down. He is fast becoming not only Tottenham's best fullback, but also England's number three, I think. When he played against Germany, he was absolutely outstanding. 
uh, the, the next game that he played a couple of days later, I feel like the excitement got to him a bit and he gave away that penalty, didn't he? Which it wasn't a penalty, but the one that should have been given before was. But I think Danny Rose, the confidence that he's getting from playing so well, the confidence from getting his first England cap, and from the fact that not only is he now getting forward and getting in good positions, he's setting up goals and being able to get backwards and defend incredibly well. He's been at Spurs a long time. He had that loan spell. When Pochettino came in, I think Danny Rose was wondering, am I going to make it at this club? He is now fast becoming an absolute legend at the club. Legend is a, a, a too easily used word, but I think if he stays in the Spurs team at left back for the next five or six years, we will be talking about him in the most hallowed of terms, alongside some of our best left backs that have ever played at this club. So Danny Rose, I wanted to talk about you. The second thing I felt we learned from the uh, Man United game, fantastic, fantastic improvement ongoing with you. Third up, I want to talk about Delhi Alley. Now, obviously, who isn't talking about Delhi Alley? But yesterday was fascinating in terms of his development. He had a quiet game last, one, last week at Liverpool. People were saying, is he getting ahead of himself? He did well for England, played really well and then he was quiet. Was he jaded because of the international football he had to play? Was it getting into his head? So he had a quiet game. Yesterday, I would say, first 65 minutes, he was even worse than he was against Liverpool. He wasn't trapping the ball, the ball was bouncing off him, he wasn't linking up the play very well, he was just very out of it. And I think it's fair to say that some fans who don't know their football that well were saying, oh, you know, maybe we need to take him off, he's having a bad game. But to me, this is where his class, absolute match-winning class counts and where Pochettino's uh, brilliance and knowledge of his players as a manager really comes to the fore. You can't be taking Deli Ali off in those situations because he continues to get into space, he continues to work hard, find himself in positions where he can affect the game. He's a match-winning player. There are not many players who get to the top level and can actually really affect a game or win a match just by being in the right position. But Deli Ali does it time and time again. And for such a youngster, he's only 20 today. It's his 20th birthday today. He has done it eight, nine times in the Premier League this season, not even including the assists. And what I'm talking about yesterday is that he could sense, when the ball was played out to Ericsson, he could sense he had to make that run. Now, we're talking about only a 10 or 20 yard run, but he knew he had to make it sprint fast and get there because Daly Blind was out of position and he sensed it. And that's not easy. I know it looks easy when you're on the pitch. It just looks like, oh, you run there and you've got an open goal. But no, he had to get into that position just like that so that Ericsson, and also let's face it, he knows his teammate, Christian Ericsson, is good enough to put that ball on a plate for him. And then when it comes across, it was only like a second or two as the ball came across, but I was thinking, oh God, he missed that chance for England. Please don't miss this chance. Please don't miss this chance. Buried it, past the best keeper in the league maybe. Him and Hugo, I think De Gea and Hugo up there as the best two keepers in the league. Maybe Petr Cech, although he's been injured quite a lot this season. But there's only one real, one or two keepers in the league who could have saved that. But Deli Ali stuck it in. Absolutely vital time in the game, 70th minute in a much win game, and that is what allowed the floodgates to open and make it one of such a fantastic performance. So like I said, Deli Ali, you can't be taking him off. Even if he's having a quiet game, he will get you a rasper from 30 yards. He will get himself in the position where he allows his teammates to set him up with a fantastic through ball, and he will win us games over and over again. He's a star, he's got it all, and even the best players have quiet games, but what they do is they make a difference one or two times a game, and that's what Deli Ali does. So the third thing I wanted to talk about in terms of what we learnt from the Man United game, Deli Ali, absolute star. Fourth up, I can't not talk about this guy. Before the game, when the team news came out, a lot of people were saying, sat around me in White Elena, they were like, I can't believe that Vim has been dropped. I can't believe that Super Yamba Tongan is coming straight back in. That's unfair, Kevin Vimmer hasn't done much wrong. I totally agree. Kevin Vimmer has been outstanding since he's come in. For a player who only cost three or four million quid, never played in the Premier League before, had a lot to learn. He's come in when Yamba Tongan got injured and done a fantastic job. So, yesterday was a difficult decision for Maurizio Pochettino. It was Yamba Tongan's first game back where he's fully fit. Does he put him in the team? Does he start him on the bench? And Pochettino, for me, made the right decision. I'll tell you why mainly. Vimmer, I think defensively, not a lot to choose from between him and Vertonghen, especially when they're playing alongside Alderweireld. Alderweireld, I feel, is the leader, he's the communicator, the one who tells them where to be, what to do, 
and they have the trust that Alderweire will be in behind them if they miss a header or if they miss a through ball because he is the most fantastic reader of the game that we've had in defence for years, since Ledley King certainly, but him and Ledley over and above everyone else we've had for decades. However, what Jan brings that I don't think Kevin Bimmer yet brings to quite the same degree is when we're on the ball. When he has the ball at his feet, not only can he knock it sideways to Alderweireld, not only can he play you know, a long uh, cross-field ball, which I think Kevin Vimmer is also quite good at, but he can actually drop a shoulder and take it 10 or 15 yards, and that opens up the play. He did it a few times yesterday. Opens up the play, allows passes to be played into the boys behind the front man, and that really gets the game starting in a different way and therefore adds something just slightly different. And that's why I think Pochettino brought him in, and yesterday with a clean sheet and a fantastic performance, I think it was totally justified. I think it's easy sometimes to try and look for something that could be a bad decision. Look for a reason why you might lose that game. Well, not just because we won, I would still say, even if we hadn't got a result yesterday, I think bringing Vertonghen back in is absolutely right. He's the oldest outfield player we've got in the team. He's a leader as well. He's seen it all. He's won titles. He's done it all. He can score goals. He can set up goals. And he's just a fantastic player to have alongside his bromance partner, Toby Alderweireld, at the back. And if he stays fit, if they all stay fit to the end of the season, will be very hard to beat. That is no doubt. So the fourth thing I wanted to talk about in terms of what we learned, I think Pochettino made the, made the right decision bringing Super Jan Vertonghen back in yesterday. Finally, but certainly last but by no means least, I want to talk about Christian Eriksen. Christian Eriksen goes a little bit under the radar, I think. I think, uh, I'd be interested to hear what you think in the comment section below, but I still think he is our most important attacking player. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, Harry Kane scored 22 goals. Deli Alli has scored more goals than him. Even Eric Lamella has got 10 goals this season. Yes, but I think everything that we do that is good comes through Christian Eriksen. They can fire the ball at him at any pace. He traps it, he gives it. They can get the ball out to him when we're nil-nil in the 70th minute in our must-win game after Leicester have won earlier in the day. And he doesn't bring the ball onto his right foot because he knows he's more confident with that. He looks up once, he looks up twice, he sees Ali there on the half volley, left foot on his, on his weaker side, the most perfectly judged ball across the box. As far as I'm concerned, at this stage of their careers, there is nobody else in our team who has technically and confidence-wise and talent-wise got what it takes to do that. The closest I'll come to is maybe Eric Lamella against Manchester City when he came on as a sub and put the ball through to Ericsson himself. But even with that, I'd say Ericsson had to make that run. Lamella, yes, great through ball, through somebody's legs. But Ericsson made the run, slotted it home. Ericsson, to me, is the most vital player in the cog of our success. And to me, it's the most vital thing that we try and get him or get him to sign this five-year deal that apparently is being mooted. I think with Ericsson, he's talked about for a long time. He turned, let's not forget, he's a player who turned down some huge clubs earlier in his career because he had a plan. He knew that he wanted to learn the league. When it comes to the Premier League at the time, he felt it was right from Ajax, learn the league at a certain club and then make his move. Well, to me, I think we need to persuade him that we are going to be that big club and he should sign here and become part of history by staying at Spurs as we go into the stadium being our main man for years and years ahead, because not only is he fantastic at set pieces, not only is he a fantastic final ball deliverer and all of that stuff, he's also a leader, but in a different way. He leads by example on the pitch. Just an unbelievable player, and to me, he doesn't get enough props, I don't think. He doesn't get talked about enough, maybe because he hasn't scored as many goals this season as he did last, but it shouldn't just be all about goals and assists. I believe he's top of the chances, uh, the chances made list of the whole Premier League in this calendar year. And like I said, I just think everything goes through, and we're so lucky to have him. Please sign him to that deal so that even at the very worst, if and when a huge club like your Real Madrid's or your Barcelona's or your Munich's come in for him, they have to pay a ridiculous sum of money because we got him for, I think, £12 million and the boy is a genius. I remember when I first saw him, he was playing for Denmark against England. I think he was 17. He had, you know, he made England look average that day and he was 17 years old. That was probably seven or eight years ago now. He is a fantastic, wonderful player. Such an honour to have him. Anyway, they were the five things I wanted to talk about in terms of what I felt we learned from the Manchester United game. What did you learn? Let us know in the comments box below. Do you agree or disagree with what I have to say? Drop a like to the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, at TV. But most importantly, enjoy your week because that was a tremendous result. 
We go to Stoke next Monday. Let's hope West Ham, believe it or not, can do us a favour against Leicester. But either way, just continue to remember what an amazing season it's been and how lucky we are to be Spurs fans right now. Come on, you Spurs. Hey, it's Smithy from Soccer M, back on Spurred On. And my video today is all about fantasies. And for me, Angelina Jolie, Jessica Alba, bath time. Oh, sorry, wrong fantasy. Top 10 Tottenham Hotspur fantasy.